My name is Barry Allen. And I am the fastest man alive. Listen to me. There's a war coming. Like a terrible war. You have failed this city. And welcome once again to the Fandom Zone podcast. Uh, I'm Charles Skaggs, and with me, as always, is the ever incredible and ever laughing Karen Lindsay. Hello. Hello, everybody. So, how are you doing, Karen? I'm good. How are you, Charles? I'm good. You're a little mellow today. A little bit. A little mellow. A just little ri- bit. riding the wave. Yeah, kind of hoping Virginia. Kind of wishing Virginia had medical marijuana today, that's all. <laughs> but we do not. Uh, so. well. well, there's always hope, I'm sure. You got your Flash figurine. Yeah, I got the, uh, I hit the local Barnes and Noble. Mm. And uh, I, I said, you know, hey, they had one of the, uh, the Flash TV show um, Funko figures. Not, not the right main DC Comics Funko Flash. But right. The, the TV show Funko Flash, so uh, he and it was in a box that was all banged up. So so I went to the counter and I said, you know, like by any chance, uh, do I need you have a buck one that's, off. do you one that doesn't have like a uh, you know it's not all crunched up and nasty looking? No, you asked for a buck off. No, 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 no. So okay. what they did, they went back and then they went to the back and they came back and they said, oh, by the way, we've got this reverse Flash <gasps> figure. So I was like, okay, you just got yourself Sold. for sale. So, Sold. Yeah. So I was like, woot. Very nice. Sadly, they did not have the Captain Cold figure because I want that as well. But I got, I've got the, the Funko Flash and Reverse Flash. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. So. I'm doing the give me hands. <laughs> and I showed you my endless figurines. Right. The whole family. I got the whole family. And of course my my avatar everywhere is Delirium. And there she is. Which is uh, which is awesome. And she is fishing. Delirium from the Sandman, always the best. Yeah, I love her. Uh, yeah. She used to be delight. Yes. And then things went south. That's oh. right. But I yeah. still love her as Delirium. She's so right. cute. I love her. So there she is fishing with her multicolored <laughs> curls. Cuz she's got her fishies. That's right. Yep. So it's probably a good thing I got these figures for this week because mm. here we are, and it's the season finale of The Flash. That's right. It's like the, like the segue there. No, no. I like forced, it. No force segue intended. I know. Well, actually, very nice. actually, there is a force segue intended. Um, but uh, so we've got that, and then now, do you want to hit Daredevil first? Because no, we, you go Daredevil. in whatever order you want. Okay. So I want to talk about The Flash because it was just Let's awesome. Do. I'm so, good at that. episode 23 of the first season, the the last episode, Fast Enough. Yeah. Written, written by Gabrielle Stanton and Andrew Kreisberg, who's the showrunner mm-hmm. on The Flash, as well as Arrow, as well as Le- or Legends of Tomorrow. So we got that. So he's a little busy. We got that going for him, which is nice. Yeah. Former writer of DC Comics. but and, uh, and it was directed by Dermot Downs. So... Uh, this episode, obviously, it's everything that's been, they've been laying the groundwork all season. And thankfully, thankfully, it was a much better season finale than Arrow's. Oh, my God. Like, night, night and day. Night and day, <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Like yeah, a what? black hole and a white hole. <laughs> you see what I did there? I see what you did there. Stop being so singularity-minded. <gasps> nice. Thank you. I see what you did there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we open the episode with Barry confronting the Reverse Flash in one of the Star Labs holding cells. 
no irony there that he's in one of the Star Lab cells now. Mm-hmm. Um, Eelbird's kind of like his usual smug self. Like, I know more than you. I've got it all planned out. You're, you know, so the supervillain thing. Mm-hmm. Um, we find out that uh, Eobarthon has been, was actually born in the year 2151, which is a major digression from the comics because in the comics he was from the 25th century, not the 22nd. Right. Yeah, so that's a little odd. Now, mind you, he's eating and drinking. What is it, a Big Belly Burger? Yeah, he's got a Big Belly Burger, Yeah. So, which is the official like McDonald's of DC Comics. I thought it was pretty cool that he's, you know, eating right. and drinking in there. So at least now we've seen them eat. eat. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. we don't need to see him poop. That's, no, that's so, no, thank we're, you. We're good, we're good with that. I'll pass. Although he, pro- although he probably does it really fast. Yeah. Because, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Aylbert, you know, he's talking to Bear. He said he's he throws out a whole bunch of exposition and background info on him. Said, you know, hey, we become enemies in the future. And I use that information, you know, knowing you're, you know, who you are, being from the future to go back in time to find out, uh, see, find you as a kid. And I was hoping to kill you as a kid. But... Your idiot future self with a white emblem stops me. Mm-hmm. So I decided to kill your mom instead. Right. Um, he thought and- that if he could uh, give him an such anguish, you know, some sort of horrific experience in that moment. Right. That that would, you know, do that would do what he needed. Exactly. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so in the process of, of killing Nora, though, that somehow severs him from the Speed Force. Right. And he can't go back to the 22nd century. Right. Um, As we knew all season. So, of course, his backup plan is, well, I guess I'll let Barry become the Flash now, and I'll use his speed to power me so that I can go back to the future. Right. Now... One of the things that's been happening all season is we know that he took um, Wells' place. Yeah. Now, Wells was going to do this whole um, reactor thing. Right. But it was just going to happen a little later. Is that the deal? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a little fuzzy on like what how he was going to pull this off. Yeah, so I'm guessing that the, the same thing was going to happen. It was just going to happen later. Right, right. I think... Well, I think he had to rig the first particle accelerator to explode to give Barry his power. Right. So then he had to fix it. Right. Make it work again so that he could power himself back into, to create the wormhole to go back to the future. Right. But Wells was still going to do that. He just sped it up. Right. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the first part of it, not the second part, obviously. The second part was all yeah. Eobard. Right. Right. And Everybody little, got that? Yeah. I'm just, yeah. you know, no, I'm I know. getting it straight for me, to yeah. be honest, because things are fuzzy. Yeah, see, a lot of, <laughs> yeah, you're a little fuzzy today. Shush. Uh, all right. Um, <laughs> but no, I was fuzzy on this anyway. Yeah. Uh, I saw some comments online that people had problems with the timey-wimey and that they, you know, that all the science stuff being thrown around. Yeah, it's just a show. I get it. I mean, I mean but... I Obviously, think, a lot of people, these people didn't have never watched Doctor Who because they would be right. so, they're just, di- they would Their be automatically dialed in. Right. Yeah. No, but, I, I mean, I get it. I just, I, I'm i thinking that's, I mean, I that's what he said, right? Is that he, when he took over Harrison Wells' body, yeah, he said, you know, well, I just, I need to move the timeline up. Mm-hmm. So I'm guessing that he knew already from, you know, history yeah. That Wells was going to cause this accident to happen. So right. I'm guessing the accident was going to happen and that all these metahumans were going to be created, but he needed to move the timeline up. I'm guessing because... Yeah, there had to be some like some time between where um, Eobard loses his powers and to the point between that and the point where he decides to take over Wells' identity. Right, right. 
So he mm-hmm. must have like researched it or, you know, like, cause he obviously had his little like AI system, Gideon. Right. So maybe he just went back and like, Oh, I guess I need to like replace Harrison Wells and take over his identity. And then I can make this happen. Right. So, or he knew because he was the reverse flash. Could be. Yeah. Could Cause be that. that would be where he got his powers from. I'm guessing. Right. Um, but the part that I was fuzzy on was that the the accident happened. You know, did it happen anyway? The accident mm. part. Yeah. So I'm guessing it did. Had to have. Yeah. Because if it didn't, then all this would have been Then known. the reverse flash wouldn't have never been reverse existed. Flash See, that's, that's kind of a paradox we have with this. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure I'm blowing people's minds already with this, but yeah. Um, so apologies for that. Yeah, me too. But 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 like you see the, why I'm bringing it up, though, yeah, right? It's it's a very circular thing because if Barry Allen didn't exist, then the Reverse Flash would never have been formed in the future, so that he couldn't come back and battle the Flash in our present. Right. So that you know. Those events, I mean, they're to use Doctor Who terms, they're fixed points. They have to happen, otherwise, this becomes a paradox. Right. So. But now then, he never existed. Maybe. So right. Maybe. So that's something we'll we'll talk about. But yeah. Yeah, there's lots I've of speculation some, now. I have some theories on that. Right. But that's all up in the air because they could do all sorts of things now with this singularity that opened up. The, the potential to write themselves out of this hole is so astounding. many things. It's, yeah. it's it's there's so many ways they could go. They could go the timey wimey route. They could go the wormhole route. They could go you know just the universe correcting itself. Mm-hmm. So stuff like that. Exactly. Or you know some unknown force. Yeah. In, that we haven't you know. Okay. This. So yeah. Anyway. We can continue on and we'll talk about that in a right. minute. But um, the uh, yeah, Ilbert uh, tells Barry that okay, if you let me go back in time, or right, I'll let you, I'll explain how you can go back in time to save your mom if you let me go home. Right. That's his, that's the choice he's faced with. And, and it's Barry, a horrible choice. It is. It, it is. It's it's yeah. You know, it's kind of a um, oh, there's a term for this. Oh, I can't remember that. Sophie's but, choice. So well, essentially, yeah, essentially, a Sophie's choice. Yeah, it is. That's the term I always use, but I know there's some other. Yeah, like a real like, non-movie. Know, Occam's Razor. There you go, Occam's Razor. Thank you. That's what I was. Trying Very to do. nice. Um, look it up. That's what the internet's for. Yeah. Uh, Barry tells the group about all this, and Professor Stein, Victor Garber, mm-hmm. says, "You know, if you go back in time, you can send off like a chain reaction." of crap Mm -hmm. where all of our lives get altered because have you not heard of the butterfly effect? Right. Because duh. Yeah. It's, it's (laughs) the whole like ripples and ponds type thing that, you know, one little moment affects everything else. So, um, well, and he's warning them. They like, there's no telling how this could end up. To be fair, Barry already knows this. Yeah. Because of what happened with the first reset that he did. Right. And he already knows that he's unhappy about what happened there and a little happy too. And this is kind of like part of my little tiny issue with this episode is that as, as awesome as it was, there's the whole issue when he boiled down to it. It's, it's Barry's selfish desires versus everything the else. The whole world. Right. Right. You know, so I'm a little surprised that Barry is so focused on like, okay, I guess I could blow everything up, but I really need to go back and see my mom. Right. So, well, and he also kind of wants to get rid of Wells. Right. I mean, that's part of it is, you know, let's send him back. Right. But there's also, you know, why send him back? Yeah. Why not stop him from just, yeah, just keep him in prison or locked up and do, but he is pretty dangerous. He is dangerous, but you know, so is there a lot of other people? So what is he going to do? Ship them off to the future? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Yeah. So uh, so Joe, you know, everybody's favorite uh, stepdaddy. Yeah. He says, you got to go. Dad, you got to go back because you got to save your mom. And again, though, dumb. You know, yeah. 
Well, so Barry, he's like juggling all this around his head. He doesn't know what to do. So he goes to see his dad in prison, mm -hmm. which all those scenes of, da of Barry meeting his dad in prison and talking to him are just always gold. I love those scenes. The I interaction love, between the two of them is amazing. There is so much heart. And just to, I mean, you get the fanboy thing of John Wesley Ship and, and Grant Gustin, the two flashes from two different, you know, TV generations. Yeah, and you, you know, can tell that he really knows that character, too. But, like, but, the, but they play off each other really well. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, I always look forward to those scenes. They're always like touchy-feely, father-son moments. Yeah, good um, touch. And Not bad he, touch. Henry, thankfully, is the voice of reason here. He's like... Don't do it. Don't. Come on, Don't. dude. He's like, you know, your mom would have been proud of you as the Flash. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, she wouldn't want you to do it. I don't want you to do it. So don't do it. Oh, it's so good, too, because he says, you know, I like this man you've become. Right. And you've saved so many lives and you need to just, you know, stay. And how selfless is that? To just yeah. know that if he doesn't go back, he's probably just stuck in prison for the rest of his life. And he's okay with that. Right. So, that's amazing. Yeah, that's why That's why Henry Allen is the man. Right. right. So, uh, Ronnie confronts Caitlin and says that uh, he and Professor Stein have decided, hey, we're going to stay in Central City. Mm-hmm. Because we've got this new show coming up. We might want to stay in Central City. Right. Um, is the new show set in Central City? I don't, I don't know, but I mean, there are lots of people from Central City in it. I know. So maybe well, that's. But Ray's not. That's true, and you know, so yeah, and neither. Is, well, Sarah could be from anywhere because she's. Yeah, the White well, Canary uh, is anywhere. White, yeah, but uh, is Ray Palmer? Where is Ray Palmer set? Well, well, I mean, he where does came, he live in the comic books? In the comic books, he's from Ivy Town. Which oh, is like right, this right. New, New England type city. Yeah, I remember we talked about that. But in the TV in the show, Constantine in, podcast. The, in the TV continuity, he just kind of swoops into Starling City and takes over Oliver's building and right. says, okay. He could live anywhere. Yeah, so yeah. he could go anywhere. Right. Well, Felicity's going to rebuff him mm -hmm. anyway, right? I mean, well, she already has, really. Right. So he's going to be she's a pain. Off, she's off driving the coast with Oliver going. In front of green screen that you hate so much. Yeah. It's the worst. Yeah. It's the worst. Yeah. You could see my face, right? Yes. yes. <laughs> they can't see your face, but trust me. It was bad. It was bad. It's exas total exasperation. Yeah. So he may want to get out of the city. He may want to yeah. leave Starling City. Although, why didn't they not rename it before he left? I mean... I thought they were going to do that. I, I know, thought, me too. It, I, th I thought it's like, hey, you know, we've got this new Star City theme. We or, you know, we right. want to. And they just dropped that abruptly. It and needs I'm like, to be Star City. It needs to be Star City. What are you doing? Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. We're so off to topic. Flag. It's yeah, not I know. funny. Well, they're practically the same show at this moment. At this moment. So, yeah. Sandman's mad uh, at me. Yeah. Sa uh, yeah. Well, he's dream. He knows. I he know. knows what's going on. Uh, Barry and Iris discuss their future, possible future, as men and wife. Mm hmm Say men and wife. Men and wife. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Mowage. Mowage is what brings us to oh, Gavon R.I.P. today. R.I.P. Peter Cook. Yeah. I just watched Princess Bride yesterday. Did you really? I did, oh, really. I it was on movie. BBC America. So, yeah. Sorry, it's stuck in my head. Love that movie. If you have not seen Princess Bride, there's something seriously wrong. Oh, my God. What is wrong with people? Are there people that haven't seen it? I would think so. Probably, well, because, you know, it's an 80s movie and people are, like, turn their nose up anymore at 80s movies. But it's it's mandatory. I'm aghast. There yeah. cannot be people that haven't seen it, right? Uh, there are, sadly, but... Okay, if any of All our right, listening correct. audience have not seen The Princess Bride, I demand it that you go see it right now. <laughs> well, there you go. Karen's demanded it. So shall it be. Is it on Netflix? I don't know. Okay. Probably not, but... Okay, go ahead. You can Sorry. find it. Um, where was I? Oh, yes. Uh, the, the marriage thing. The marriage, the marriage. Mm -hmm. yeah. Iris tells him, you know, and I love this scene between Barry and Iris because Iris has had a lot of horrible scenes this season, but this, this is how she should be written because she's just very calmly saying, look, um, 
you got to do what's best for you. You right. know, and she's encouraging him to go back and because you know, she's not worried. She's more concerned about him mm-hmm. than everything else. And she's not being a jerk about it. She's not saying, well, you could screw things up for me or, you know, she's not laying on giving him guilt trips or anything like that. She's just trying to be his friend. Right. Which is awesome. And so That's- for once, you've saved the whole city all this time right. for once, do something for you. Right. And I think it's very sweet that she says that. So this is the Iris that we've needed mm-hmm. to see. The supportive, sweet Iris. So, so Flash Riders, how about we do more of that? Yes. Not the and whiny. Le- and, that, and less of, yeah, the, the yeah. whiny and, yeah. Yeah. Although I don't hate Iris. No, I think she's just written poorly. Right. I just don't get yeah. that she's the Iris from the comic books at all. Not but. yet. Yeah. But maybe this if, is more like her, though. Yeah, exactly. Maybe if we have more scenes like this, yeah. she'll feel more like Iris. Right. Yeah. Wacky thought. I mean, the Flash, Barry Allen, is like Barry Allen from the comic yeah. books, I think. Right. So, okay. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, thank you. Uh, no problem. Uh, Thawn, meanwhile, tells Aobard. Barry. Aobard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, gotta, we have to be clear about that because we got two Thawns. Mm-hmm. Uh, Aobard tells Barry... If you run through that fat particle accelerator fast enough, you'll create a wormhole mm-hmm. that will let him go back into the past while I go back to the future. Yep. And uh, but you got to hit that um, wormhole at optimal speed, or you will die. Eighty-eight miles per hour. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, it turns out it's more like fourteen. 100 miles per hour. Yeah, well. Lot two. I'm sorry. I had oh, to yeah. say 80. I, you got to go. Yeah. <laughs> got to get back in time. Right. Okay. I can't drive 88. Barry, Barry, we've got to go back to the future. <laughs> Don't want to be late again. All right. So take me away. <laughs> I don't mind. So okay, Barry goes sorry. to ask Cisco, uh, hey, could you build me a time machine? Mm-hmm. Which just out of the blue, I think it just sounded hilarious. Like, I know. I thought so, too. On, on top of everything else, Cisco, oh, yeah, you could build a time machine, right? It's only never been invented before. and Well, okay, except for they had well, it there. Yeah, see, that's the, that's the, that's the out right. that I will give them. Like okay. This. Because if it would just been like Cisco build a time machine, right. then I, yes, I would be like what BS. I call BS I, on that. Okay, yeah. so but so it's, it's really since, just can we figure out what's wrong with this time machine? Right, because apparently Thawne needs a time machine to travel back to the future, even though Barry doesn't need a time machine to go back to the past. Well, all right, right, yeah, that seems a little odd. Okay, but. but, but, but Wells supposedly doesn't have a connection to the speed force that Barry has. Right. So that's how they explain that. I and uh, Aobard needs to go to a specific time, whereas Barry just kind of went. But he's trying to go back to a specific moment in time, his mother's death. Now. Yeah. But before when he did. Right. Yeah. So Cisco goes to visit Thawne, hanging out, eating Big Belly Burger in his cell. Well, they're not very happy with each other here. Yeah, because... Uh, Although, you know, he's so patronizing to Cisco, I think, in this moment. Well, but he, I don't he think he about, means he to about, be. Yeah, because he talks about... Before, he's talked about Cisco being like his son. I almost. know. But, yeah. Do you think so, he means it? Maybe in his own warped way. He yeah. He kind of sees it that way. I don't know. Cisco doesn't want to see it like that yeah, now, though. Cis- Cisco has kind of a problem because he tells uh, Aylbird, like, dude, I've been seeing, like, this alternate timeline where you killed me. Right. So, And then I'm he's, not- you know, Aylbard is all pleased about this. Oh, well, ooh, it looks like you have been affected <laughs> by the, oh, it looks like you're a metahuman. Yay! And I gave yeah. you this gift out of love. Oh. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, Aylbird figures out, yeah, that uh, Cisco can sense these, like, vibrations of alternate timelines so right because he's going to be vibe right so can they so, hit us over the head with the fact that he's a metahuman any, right. any more than this but that's kind of the bombshell it's like okay we're going to reveal at the season finale that oh yeah by the way you're a metahuman right 
Right. So, no, which we knew all along anyway. Well, no, the comic book readers did. Yes. But the people that aren't comic books, that's their clue in. Yes. Right. So, the you know, if they don't read the comics and don't talk to anybody who does. Right. Which there like, are people that just watch it because it's entertaining. And that's cool. Right. That's okay. But, yeah. We so have to those, keep that in mind. That those, those of us in the know, because yeah. we're s- smug comic book Because we're special and, yeah. 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 yeah like and the, smug, you're right. Yes, we yes, are. We are smug. <laughs> yeah. We know better than everyone else. And, yeah. We paid our dues, damn it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, uh, you know, you do have to keep in mind that they have to spell it out for the people that watch this casually. And I think it was a smart move. To reveal that so that mm-hmm. at least they're prepared next season when they do give him his secret identity and he <laughs> makes up his right. own name as Vibe. <laughs> I just, so. I'm just hoping for the parachute pants. Oh, no, no. <laughs> break, dan- break dancing Vibe. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. <laughs> Can't touch Can't this. Touch this. <laughs> You mean those parachute pants? That's that's awesome that you had that queued up. Yes. That is just g- It's cool. it's on our soundboard, so That's fantastic that you had that. <laughs> I didn't even know you had that. Oh yeah. Can't that's, touch this is one of my one of my uh, core sound clips. That's awesome. That's right. That was that worked brilliantly. <laughs> Papa Midnight's down with it. That's right, he is. Welcome back, Papa Midnight. <laughs> we we miss you. We do. All right. So Stein tells Eddie, oh, dude, you're like an anomaly. Now, like, see, that conversation was also very good, yeah. even though Eddie is like way out of it still. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, because he's, you know, being held hostage by Aylbert, the reverse flash for so long. And, you know, Aylbert's given him all this lines about, uh, you know, you're not going to amount to anything. You're not going to help anybody. Barry's going to marry Iris, so it doesn't matter what you do. Mm-hmm. So he's kind of like, well, what's the point of everything? Right. So when Eddie talks to Dr. S- professor Stein, uh, I got to call him Professor Stein, even though they call him Dr. Stein. No, it's okay. He's a professor. He's Professor Stein. Yeah. Because I'm an old school Firestorm fan. I got to call him Professor Stein. <laughs> um, and, you know, he's and Stein's explaining, look, you know, you can choose whatever you want to do. You're not a, you know, like it's not predestined. You can do whatever you want. Uh, don't buy into into you know evil supervillains lines. So, Victor Garber is amazing in that role. He is. He, he's he's great. It's I can't perfect casting. I'm so glad that he's going to be part of uh, Legends of Tomorrow because yeah. it's, it's just just the chance to see him every week as opposed to just guest starring here and there. Yeah. It's going to be great because I, I loved him on Alias and I'm so glad to, to get him in a f- nice little TV show setting again. I'm just a fan. I mean, yeah. a big fan of his. He's, he's so. great. But uh, we have, um, so Th- or, uh, Eddie uh, ends up going to uh, see Iris later on and that... Uh, you know, they they work all that out and they kind of get back together. Yeah. He takes the conversation to heart. Yeah. And says, if I can choose my destiny, then I choose Iris. Right. And they, and she's okay with that. She's like, okay, mm-hmm. I guess we're back together now. Right. Well, she does love him. For the moment. Right. Which we will get into later. Right. But. I, I do think she truly loves him. I think so, too. And, uh... Meanwhile, Professor Stein figures or discovers that Barry could create a black hole in the process of, you know, that could only destroy the planet in the process of doing this wormhole thing. Oopsie. Which at this point, and this is where I have the problem. Mm-hmm. Okay. Again, we have Barry's selfish desires against possibly creating a black hole that could destroy all life on Earth as we know it. Right. Why are you doing this? Right. And then, you know, they go to to uh, Wells, mm-hmm. fake Wells, and he has known about this. Oh, well, yeah. you'll have two minutes. Yeah, right. Yeah, I did know two. about it. And you're the Flash, so like two minutes is like... Oh, that's you know, plenty. That's plenty of time. I was going to let you know. <laughs> but, you know, yep. it, it was a need-to-know basis, and you didn't need to know yet. 
So he was going to let him do all this stuff, yeah. and then, oh, by the way, yeah, you got two minutes, or so else this, the world is gone. <laughs> so at this point, you would think that Barry would be going, okay, so what else haven't you told me? Right, you would think. Right. Right. But he doesn't. Nope. No. Uh, Barry tells Joe he doesn't want to lose him. I don't want to lose you, man. Right. You're like cool stepdad. Yeah, well, I like... God, there's so many heartfelt speeches that I just dug in this episode. And that one was one as well when he says, you know, I feel like I lost one dad and I don't want to lose another one. Yeah. And a lot of this was, you know, from watching Doctor Who. Yeah. And I'm hoping you feel this way too. Um, knowing about how time works on TV, mm -hmm. you think to yourself, well, yeah... You'd lose that dad, but you wouldn't know. Right. Because the, you're, it, it, it would just, the universe would correct itself and, you know. And you'd never know. Is, yeah. But in that moment, there's a sadness. Right. Between the two of them. Unless, of course, you're Cisco and you would remember it. Right. There's that. Yeah. But, you know, that, that's not. I know, not, I know. That's not between the two of them. I get what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, so when Cisco says you'd never know us, that's a whole different matter. He would. Right. He would know. Right. Probably. Right. Yeah. But yeah, the, I'm going, okay, well, uh, you'd never <laughs> meet us. And? <laughs> and? <laughs> you guys wouldn't care because your yeah. lives would go on. And uh, And part of the problem here with this group is that they're so focused on making Barry happy. They're like, okay, you're such a nice guy, and you know you always help others, so you should help Let's yourself. Let's make for your a dreams come true. Yeah. Even though you could create a black hole and destroy us all. Right. Right. Although there are a few of them that say it eh, maybe not be yeah. a, well, the like best Henry. idea. Right. Yeah. Henry's. Even though Henry doesn't know about the black hole, you know Henry right. senses tingling, going, "Don't do it." Dude. Right. And the professor, I think, is interested in the science behind it. Yeah. But he also sees that it mightn't be the wisest move mm -hmm. to make. He, yeah, he's not one of those scientists like, oh, yeah, we got to do this just to see what yeah, happens. Yeah, no, he's not excited about it. No, he's no, just he, interested in the science behind right. it. He's he's pragmatic enough to know, like, okay, black hole bad. Right. Might not be the best thing to try it. Yeah. Yeah. Although he really should have shut it down. You know, got to shut yeah. this down. Yeah. We're, 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 yeah. You yeah. would think it'd be like... We're not going to do this. Yeah. This is a bad, bad idea. You would think. Yeah. yeah. Again, this is caring for Barry, overriding all common sense. Right. That that was the big hand wave in this episode. Otherwise. Yes, otherwise. Right. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, go back in time. And right, that's, right. That's, but uh, you could see where this was driving him his whole life. So it would be easy to get carried away by it. So, right. right. Yeah, I get it. And everybody else apparently got carried away right along with it. Sure. He's Barry. Yeah, he's Barry. He saved all these lives. He's such a good guy. Shucks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Golly gee whiz. Yeah. Ronnie and Caitlin hold a spontaneous wedding. Mm -hmm. Just because, in case everything stays the same. Yeah. You know, just in case, hey, well, you know, there could be a black hole that destroys us all, but let's get married. Yep. Hey, and let's go to the closet and do it. Yeah. <laughs> and Professor Stein, a scientist. That was my editorial comment. Yeah. Yeah, he's a rabbi. And he's just all of a sudden decides, well, I'm going to officiate it at your wedding. Right. Did you take a course on this? Did is the was there like, you know, a, a cracker jack prize? What <laughs> what's up? Yeah, well, it's always convenient when someone is ordained. Yeah, we've had this before. Like Ray Palmer. All on the Arrow, time. Right. On Arrow. Like, oh, it's, by the way, I can officiate a wedding. It's what? everywhere, Charles, on every what? show. Yeah, Schmidt on New Girl. And I mean, That's a, and, and it just reeks of, hey, we don't want to pay for an extra character actor to come in and officiate a wedding. So how about we just take one of the existing cast and they perform the ceremony? Right, exactly. At least on Parks and Rec, they yeah. work at City Hall. Yeah. So they just go upstairs and get the officiant. Now, granted, with the special effects in this episode, I could totally see why they want to save some money. Sure. Because there were some great effects in this episode. There were. There were. And, uh, 
Uh, so Barry enters the accelerator, hitting Mach 2. Mm-hmm. He goes into the speed force. That's right. And this is where we get our whole bunch of Easter eggs. That's right. Do you want me to list them? Or do you uh, have them all? I I think I have them all. Okay. But if you want to go ahead and run it down. I'll, I'll, ladies first. Okay. Tell me if I miss any. Okay, go ahead. We see Jay Garrick's helmet. Yeah, because that's... And that is Hermes' that kinda, helmet, right? That, that kind of spits out. Mm-hmm. Um, we see a glimpse of the Flash Museum. Mm-hmm. Which is awesome. I know. We see a future Caitlin Snow as Killer Frost. Yes. <gasps> Spoilers. Yeah. <laughs> well. Yeah, for those who don't read the comics, it's a spoiler. Right. Yeah. We see a glimpse of Barry in handcuffs and a prison uniform with An the Iron letters... Heights jumpsuit, yeah. IHP. Yep. Suggesting so... that he will be arrested for a crime. Well, at least, you know, he and his dad can have some more father-son bonding time. Right. Um, and that's all that's right. I have. That's all I got, too. Okay. So you're gold. Good. You're good. Uh, arriving in the past, Barry sees his older self with the white emblem, mm -hmm. red, red costume, battling the reverse flash. Yeah, they're like... Nice. Yeah, with the Funko figures. I so, like it. Yeah, well, it doesn't go audibly, so. So no, well. he's fighting with his Funko finger uh, yeah, they, figures, just so you know. They, they're like, swoosh, swoosh, yeah. swoosh, swoosh, swoosh. We yeah. need to do a live video podcast at some point. One of these days. if We should. To traumatize everybody with that. Yeah. No, we're fun. <laughs> we are fun. We are fun. I like to think we're fun. Are you going to kiss, make them kiss? No. Not kiss. They're not kissing. Okay. They're arch enemies. Why would they kiss? I don't know. This is not slash fiction. <laughs> Aren't this you is, supposed to do that? These are superheroes versus supervillains. Okay. Come on. Here. All you Slash figures out there. So you have the regular Flash. I want the regular Flash, too. Flash is kissing delirium. I just have the t I have the TV show Flash. He's a little different. Yeah. So he's got his little, like, lightning bolt earpieces as opposed to the traditional. Is mine Wally? No, because of the belt. The, the straight belt around is Barry. Wally's would be pointed like a V. Right. Yeah. You're that's right. how you tell that's how you tell them apart easily. Okay. So I have Barry. Yes. It's just future Barry. There you go. It's future Barry. Yeah. So Okay. So Barry and Delirium. Okay. So you're still ahead of me because you've got future Barry and then I've got I'm not present ahead Barry. Of you. Yeah. Here. He's kissing Desire. All right. See <laughs> because they Desire made him want to kiss. Desire is the one that kisses Desires, everyone, right? Yeah. Well, it also makes people want to Just, kiss. You know, this is the one he doesn't want to be kissing right here. All right. So those of us who are like... Death. But, yeah, probably like, you know, not playing with toys. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> we got a little tangent there. My yeah. fault. Uh, all right. So back in the... All right. We've had... They've been battling. Okay, we did that. Other older Flash tells him, oh, no, no, don't, don't save your mom. Right. He Gives stopped big, just long like, enough to say, no, don't no, 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 don't do that. So mm -hmm. Barry ducks behind, you know, goes out back outside the kitchen or, or living room or wherever. And he has to hear his mom being stabbed to death. Ungood. Which is just messed up on all kinds of levels. Yeah. Like, okay, I can't prevent my mom from being stabbed and I have to hear it. And be there now, again for the third time in his life. No. He goes back out after the reverse flash and older flash take their battle elsewhere. Mm -hmm. um, which kind of tells you right there that, oh, by the way, the reverse flash will be back. Right. Because he's obviously has to fight Barry, older Barry, at some future point that we don't know about yet. Right. Because we don't know when older Barry is from. Right. Specifically. Could be two years, could be 2024. Who knows? Right. So yeah, we'll he fight. hasn't disappeared yet. So nope, right. Uh, so Barry goes into the room where his mom has just been murdered mm -hmm. or about to, and he takes off his mask and reveals himself as her son. Yeah, in a very ter Grant Gustin is really superb in this episode. I agree. He brought he's, it. I mean, he's got he's interacting all the scenes he's in. You know, he's got a whole gamut of emotions. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, he does a really nice job. So kudos there. He kudos. was the uh, VIP actor, MVP actor of the week on TV line. I think so. I think totally deserved. No, he really was. I mean, I believe, I believe okay. you. I just, yeah, I think it's totally deserved. Yeah. Um, he tells his mom he loves her and Nora tells him goodbye. And then she's, she dies. Yeah. He says that he and dad are fine. Yeah. And so I had a few little onions yeah, were, being little cut in the background. A little yeah. fuckclumped. I was. Yeah. It was all the feel, all the feels. All, all the feels. All the feels. Yeah. It was sad. We created a black hole, so at least Barry could have closure. There was a black hole in my heart. <laughs> nice. It's true. That's on the card. That's on his card to his dead mom. Like, That's right. <laughs> you've, I've created a black hole in my heart just for you. <laughs> I made it for you, mommy. Yeah. I made the singularity just for you. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you like it. Which is true. He did. He yeah, made he did. the singularity just for you. Um, in the meanwhile, in the present, uh, the reverse flash enters his little time sphere mm-hmm. and notes that it was based off of Rip Hunter's design. That's right. Which is awesome. I love that. And I love it. The Easter Rip Hunter eggs. again is going to be on Legends of Tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Played by Arthur Darville from Doctor Who. That's right. Which is just greatness in itself. I know. Uh, I can't wait. Ca- brilliant casting on that one. Yeah. And I love Rip Hunter. Yeah, yeah. In the comic books, he's great. He's so he's, underrated. Right. And I actually want to write a Rip Hunter series. So DC Comics, let me write Rip Hunter because I really want to write Rip Hunter. And you would do great with that, Thank I think. You. I would think. Because he's basically the DC Universe's Doctor Who. Yeah, he is. When he's written the way he should be. Right. He's, he's Doctor Who. Mm-hmm. Um, th- at this point, this is when Jay Garrick's winged helmet pops out of the wormhole. Mm-hmm. Bling. Blink. And you're, everybody's like, ah, Jay Garrick. And the, the po- fan possibilities are like sprouting already. Like, oh, Earth 2 and the Justice Society. Ah, ah. Right. And, yeah. We're just kind well, of geeking out. And everybody what? who doesn't read comics is looking at us going, huh? just dial it down. Right. Watch the rest of the episode. It's a bowl with wings on it. And I'm like, what? No. Ah, ah. <laughs> yeah. But it's an awesome bowl with wings on it. Ah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I got a little fangirly there. Yeah, that's just that's geeky. Um, Barry returns just as Wells is about to leave. Well, Thawne, Eobard Thawne is about to leave. Oh, he's a little uh, ragey. S- stops him from escaping, and Reverse Flash is like, why are you back? Yeah. You didn't save your mom! Right. And they, so they start he, they getting ready to fight, yep. when all of a sudden the, a gunshot rings out. Mm-hmm. Blam! And what happens? We find out that Eddie... Shoots himself. Yep. Instead of getting maybe a vasectomy, <laughs> you know, well, something maybe taken. It was he wanted to do something immediate. At least wrapping, you know, that rascal up in a condom somewhere, maybe. Well, you know, so. Again, he wanted to do it immediately yeah. so that the effects would be seen. Yeah. So Eddie takes himself out to take Aoberthon, the Reverse Flash, out. Mm-hmm. Um, Eddie dies a hero, so he's all like, hey, I got to save somebody, yay, I'm dead. Uh. Right. And Iris is like, no. <laughs> yeah, everyone was like, no. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and... I can see why her- he did it. That is really the only 100% way. Right, but I got to To think. make sure. Of course think. there are other ways, but, yeah. you know. <sighs> Stop the line right there. Right. I'm out. If anything else, he could have just cut his junk off and... You'd still die. That's true. But maybe, you know, like you bandaged that up really quickly. I don't know. Really? I don't know. I don't know. Would you have the courage to do that? No, I'd or probably Or would you rather just rather just, shoot I'd yourself? Rather, yeah, I'd rather shoot myself. So, okay. I get your point. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Thawne... And then, you know, he could stand there and say, Hey, I'm going to go get a vasectomy tomorrow. <laughs> I don't think that would really have the same impact. As, but it would be you know. awesome, though. <laughs> it's like, yeah. oh, by the way, I got a vasectomy. No! no! Yeah. <laughs> and he fades from existence. Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, Elberthon reverts to his original appearance, yep. played by Matt Letcher, mm-hmm. I think his name is, uh, which is kind of cool, before he vanishes into existence. Mm-hmm. Or non-existence, as the right. case may be. Or does he dot, 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 question mark? 
Dun, dun, dun. Like that? Yeah. Because apparently, um, according to Kreisberg, uh, he's coming back for season two. Yeah. So he's, come on, he's a great villain. You don't want to get rid of him. Sure. He's awesome. So who's coming back for season two, though? Well, Which actor? Uh, I would think it would be Tom Cavanaugh. Okay. But he could be coming back as Wells. Right. We don't know. Right. Or is he dot, dot, no, dot. No, I'm just saying. <laughs> I know. You know, I know, now that they've altered the timeline, he could be yeah. either character. Yeah. So. But we know that apparently Eddie is not coming back. Right. Ed's dead, baby. Ed's yeah. dead. Ed's <laughs> dead. For you Pulp Fiction fans. <laughs> uh, the wormhole... Open reopens, growing larger and larger, mm. and, and again in the head slap. And Professor Stein's probably going, "I told you, I totally told you on this." Right, right. What are you doing? I warned you. you this? I warned you, but did you? Oh no, you just know. It's, <laughs> oh, it's always the same. I always say. Right, and it's even worse than he said. He said, "You know, not only yeah. are we going to get wiped out, it just is not going to stop with us." Yep. So, Barry, because you wanted to save your mom, the yep. universe is going to implode. Yep. A little bit of an epic fail there. Yeah. Bum, 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 bum. Uh, so, we've got this big black hole forming above Central City, and only the Flash can stop it. Except he has no idea whether he can stop it or not. No, but he's going to try because right. he's Flash and that's what you do. Right. So he, so he runs right up a building, mm -hmm. which is always awesome to see him running it, up. It's, it was like crumbling. Yeah. It was such yeah. a great well, special we had, effect. We, we had all this debris falling from the black hole because of stuff being sucked up in, into it. Mm -hmm. So as he runs up the building, he kind of like skips across all the various debris mm -hmm. to get up to where the, the black hole is and starts running around it. Yeah, it was great. Of, Counterclockwise against the uh, vortex. Yeah, and uh, I was waiting for like uh, a witch to go by. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. exactly, and of course, cliffhanger ending. <gasps> yeah, no. what's going so, to happen next? Long wait until the fall. No, I know. Except for, I am. I'm on the edge of my seat. Yes. Yeah. But this left me so satisfied that mm -hmm. I'm just. I'm really happy that it ended here because it, it was, was just a, it was, so good. It was a good place to end it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A little bit more satisfying than the Arrow finale. A little bit more? Okay. A lot more satisfying yeah. than the Arrow finale. Yeah. Although I have the same feeling where uh, I don't feel super anxious for the the fall premiere. You know, I want to see where it picks up again. I do. I really right. want to see. But I'm so satisfied by the Flash ending that I'm just like, oh, well, you know, fantastic. Yes, mm -hmm. I want to see it. But, you know, it's not like a lot of cliffhangers where you go, oh, that leaves me so frustrated. This one is more like, oh, I've got so many things to think about. That's fantastic. I'm, I'll be busy all summer. <laughs> And and the arrow is like I just I just I'm so upset I don't care you know <laughs> <laughs> so yes I'll be busy with the flash all summer in my head okay so, so I don't feel we... like I'm gonna be like waiting you know what I mean right okay. I totally agree so now that we've talked this to death yeah I'm sorry we spent a whole hour on this one I know but it was worth it because it was awesome yeah we'll what go quickly you... on the other two yes and. and... Kind of a surprise. I'm sure it's no surprise here what your rating is going to be, but go ahead and give your rating. Yep. Nine and a half wing. Oh, ten ripped rip hunter references. I almost read right. yours. I'm sorry. I know you did. Because, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, because I gave this one nine and a half out of ten only because of like the big Barry, hand wave. The big, like, okay, let's go, like, go back in time to say my mom at the expense of like creating right. a black hole to right. suck everybody into oblivion. Yeah. It's a comic book, though. And I know. And it's winged helmets. You did yeah. winged helmets. So, yeah, 9.5 out of 10 winged helmets. Yeah. So, cause and I that love was just the awesome. Rip Hunter references, so I yep. had to use that. Rip Hunter. Props for Rip Hunter. If you uh, write a Rip Hunter book. Yes, I would love Even to. if you just write it like fan fiction comics, mm -hmm. I would be all over that, like white on rice. <laughs> 
Well, I would, ideally, I would like to get paid for it. But of course. Because I am a professional. Yes. You're a pro. Look it up in the book. Yeah. Well, at least I, I try to be. Yeah. It's but. fantastic. Okay, so. All next. right. So next, iZombie. Let's breeze through these. Yeah, Mr. Berserk. Written by Deirdre Mangan and Graham Norris. Directed by Jason Bloom. Uh, Liv. Poor Liv is still in shock over Lowell's death. Me too. In the pre- previous episode. So, yeah, there's a, there's probably a lot of broken hearts over Lowell's death. I was kind of hoping it wasn't for reals. A lot of upset fangirls. Hey. Probably, probably a few fan guys as well. So I didn't want it to be reals. But it's for reals. I know. Lieutenant Suzuki off screen uh, declares Lowell's death a suicide. And because- duh. Yeah, because he's all tight with Blaine and trying to keep Blaine from any incriminating wrongdoing. Mm-hmm. Uh, Robbie thinks he should sign off on that because it's safer for everybody if uh, Blaine thinks he's off the hook. And especially Liv. Right, right. Since Liv was there and is being questioned and all that stuff. Yeah. So we have um, Liv eating the brains of Rebecca... This alcoholic newspaper reporter. The one that that uh, Major set up Clive with, right? Oh, good connection. I did not make that connection. Yeah, that's Very the one. well spotted. Mm-hmm. I did not make that connection at all, but you're right. Mm-hmm. So points, points to uh, Karen there. Stupid reporter. <clears throat> yep, stupid reporter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she, uh, she was investigating the Max Rager-related incidents, incidents that... Uh, Resulted in a lot of deaths, and of course she ends up murdered somehow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nobody seems like really concerned about it because, again, Lieutenant Suzuki is a jerk. Right. Yeah. Um. So and it works out for Liv because she's all wanting to kind of get de- be depressed over Lowell. Sure. So she's so she's like, okay, I guess I'll become an alcoholic. Right. Which well, is kind of a weird way to cope with your grief, but okay. She wants to numb herself. Yeah, and, exactly. Well, I think, doesn't she have to drink the brain or eat the brains of someone who's an alcoholic in order to feel it? I'm not sure on that. Because if she just drank, I, I mean, think she's already she feeling She's already feeling bad. Yeah, but she wouldn't be able to numb the pain. I don't know. That's a good question. I don't think she would. Okay. Maybe that's it. Because she can't. She can't taste anything unless it's got hot sauce on it. Right. It's a good point. It's a good point. Okay. Major, Sorry. major, major tries to get Clive to believe he shot the candy man repeatedly. Mm-hmm. And Clive finds no blood or slugs in Major's house. Yeah. And is like, oh, by the way, I ran to the candy man at the gym, so I guess he's not dead. Mm-hmm. I think you should check yourself into a mental facility. Yep. Get some help. Get some help, dude. Right. And I am really, I, I know we think Major's a jerk. Right. And he has been a jerk lately. But I really do feel bad for him at this point. Right. Because everybody's keeping secrets of, from him, so he thinks he's getting crazy. Right. He's now buying into his own, like, you know, false impression that everybody has kind of, like, projected on him. Right. He, it's like, he has seen real things. Yeah. And he should be like, hey, this stuff happened, but right. nobody believes him. Right. Everybody tells him he's crazy, so therefore now he's buying into that. Right. Which is pretty well, bad. Well, Clive is the only one who doesn't believe him. Everyone else knows it's true. And they're keeping it from him. But they're, right. Yeah. But, but they're Ravi, they're lying to him. Oh, no. <laughs> now, now, to Ravi's credit, he wants to tell Major. Yes. And he's like, you know, we should tell Major about the zombies, but Liv's like, no, no, no. Major's probably going to be a lot safer in the mental health facility. And I see her point. I right. do. But again, the only reason you should at least, you could tell him and then say, oh, just pretend you're crazy. Right. So that but you, you might. Say, but again, I don't know that he would. Right. She, I, I do see her point yeah, that she cause says. Because he's, he's so obsessive about everything. Yeah. Yeah. If she knew the truth, then, you know, where would it end? Yeah. So, mm. so, so using but I, the infor- I do think he should know. Yeah, I agree. So using the information that she got from uh, Rebecca's brain, 
Uh, Liv goes to see Max Ragerhead, Von Du Clark, played by Stephen Weber. Of Wings. Of Wings. And, and The uh, Shining. And he totally shuts her down. <laughs> the TV version. Yeah, the, the TV Shining. version, the yeah. not good one. I like that one. See, I like the movie version. Better. I know you did. It's I Cooper, know. It's, so. This is where we we differ. Yeah. Respectfully. We agree to disagree. We agree to get disagree on that yeah. one. I, so, uh, yeah, he totally shuts Liv down. He's like, okay. And then when she leaves, um, he tells one of his henchmen, oh, yeah, take her out. Yep. Which, when oh, we have uh, Liv getting drunk at a bar. Mm-hmm. And getting hit on. I like that. Can I buy you a drink? Sure. So what's your... No. <laughs> <laughs> You've wanted to say that to, like, any guy that, yeah. I know. That's great. She, um, You know, she's okay if he's... You know, yep. if he's just going to be cool, but then he, he's going to yep. give her a line and then that's it. Nope. And who comes to her rescue but Major? Oh, so and, sweet. You know, like, you know, keep in mind the Major's like her ex fiance that she dumped arbitrarily after becoming a zombie. Yeah. So he probably still has residual feelings for her. Oh, he's still in love um, with her. I yeah, mean, there's it, no doubt in my mind. And so he takes her home. He does the nice guy thing. We all know where nice guys finish. Yeah. Uh, so and so a, he tuck, tucks it's her the next bed. morning that he's going to leave for, for yeah, the... Yeah, the mental, mental health facility. Right. Yeah, yeah. So he tucks her into bed and she's like, can you give me a back rub like you used to? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a little excessive, <laughs> I thought. Now, to be fair, she is drunk. Yes, and she just lost Lowell. Right. So she's wallowing. And, oh, by the way, don't, like, scratch my back too hard so that you cr- puncture blood because right. you might turn into a zombie. Yeah. I thought of that, too. Yeah. But, really again, should. she's drunk, so yeah. she's not really thinking this one through. Uh, speaking of that hitman we spoke about earlier, Sebastian gets a hold of Liv, knocks her out, mm-hmm. takes her to the middle of a lake to dump her body. He was good. Yeah, he was. This this guy was a blast. And and the boat's name I I found this out was called Fun Fun. That was the boat's name. Fun Fun? Fun Fun. Like probably Fun Fun, Rock and Roll High School, Fun Fun. Like yeah. I'd like it. I don't know. Um and she's all like bleeding out on her forehead or whatever, so he he like reaches down as she's laying there on the boat and licks her blood. Yep. Not knowing, of course, that she is a zombie. Yep. I knew something was coming with that, too. I mean... Now, he, t- now he takes this flash drive from her. Mm-hmm. Because he's like, okay, you know, I can use this to, you know, like, I'm going to need this probably at some point. So he takes that from her, but then he, like, uh, he's getting ready to dump her in the in the lake. Uh, Liv wakes up, goes full zombie on his ass. Mm-hmm. Knocks him overboard, and he gets chewed up in boat propellers. Mm-hmm. Gross. All this yeah. blood in the water. Yeah. Just like all in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Yep. Yep. Um, and last we, lastly, we had uh, the, well, actually, next to lastly. Uh, next to lastly, we had the psych ward patient at Major's little new facility. This guy's name is Steve E. Like Stevie. Not Stevie. Stevie. Steve E. Steve E. Yeah. yeah. And he tells Major... Dude, there's like a major like zombie problem here in Seattle. Right. Didn't you know this? Yeah. What's wrong? What's wrong with you? <laughs> yeah. And major's well, like, uh, uh. To his credit, at least yeah. someone is, yeah. you know, letting him in on this. And then, lastly, cool. of course, we have uh, Sebastian coming out of the lake. His face is kind of chewed up a little bit, mm-hmm. but surprise, he's a zombie now. <gasps> Dun, dun, dun. And he's probably going to look for some payback. Mm-hmm. So Now, he is played by Matthew McCall. Right. And he is going to be in Tomorrowland. Oh, which is out now. Is it out now? It's out now. Oh, I got to go see it. It's not doing that great. It only got like 50% on Rotten Tomatoes. Still. Which is disappointing because I love Brad Bird as a director. So I'm going to go see it anyway. Yep. He was on Once Upon a Time, Supernatural, Fringe. Yep. Oh, there's points there. Yeah. Points for Fringe. So he's got a resume. Good guy, yeah. Yep. Yep. So what do you give this episode? He's Canadian. 
Um, eight concrete blocks to the face. Ooh. Yeah. Nice. That was nice. That was good. I, of course, had to give this one eight out of ten boat propellers. Ouchie. We were stuck on that same scene, weren't we? Yes, we were. Yeah. But come on, it was a great scene. It was. It was a very good scene. And once again, we're in, totally in sync on iZombie. Yep. That Which show is... Yep. It's really good. Mm-hmm. And it's it, consistent. It, it's consistently good. It really snuck up on me. I it had no idea you, I'd like it that much. It doesn't give you overwhelmingly good episodes, but it gives you really solidly consistent good episodes. Mm-hmm. So, and I think that's kind of why like the audience has stayed the same. Right. It hasn't really built up the ratings wise, but it hasn't gone down either. Right. It's a very steady line. Right. With I with I Zombie fans. Now there was that one that I hated. Yeah, but that was a. But that was just the niche. Every thing. so often, it, and thankfully, it's the exception, not the norm. Right. Right. So lastly, it's a good thing we were in sync on this one because uh, with Daredevil, we're not in sync. No, but it's it's not that far off. Yeah. Uh, episode seven of the first season, Stick, written by Douglas Petrie and directed by Brad Turner. And uh, we basically this episode introduces, uh, introduces us to Stick, the, the guy who trains Matt in the use of his heightened senses and how to fight mm-hmm. played by Scott Glenn to perfection. Yeah. Because if you've read uh, the Frank Miller daredevil comics and you know about stick, you'll know that that Scott Glenn is dead on as stick. Yeah. Totally. He's good. He is good. And I love Scott Glenn. Yeah. I mean, dude was Jack Crawford in silence of the lambs. Yeah. So it shows you how good he can be. Right. Yeah. And which, which, uh, which astronaut been, did he play in the right stuff? I can't remember, but I'm sure it's like Neil Armstrong or something. It wasn't Neil Armstrong. No, no that was Ed Harris, right? Yes. Yeah, so we, uh, he's probably Buzz Aldrin, or maybe, I don't know. No. I don't Carpenter, know. Scott Carpenter, I Scott think. Scott Carpenter, maybe. Anyway. Yeah, so, yeah, he's he's good in everything, Scott Glenn. He is. All right. So we're introduced to Stick, who's busy lobbing off a hand of a Japanese businessman. So that right there tells you what Stick's about. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. That was <laughs> right. a good scene. That's great. Like, okay. So, hello, blind guy that all of a sudden, what? He's chopping dude's arms off. He's like, he's awesome. Yep. So you figure, old blind guy, oh, no, no. Guess what? Yeah. Surprise. Uh, Matt confronts Leland Owsley following up on the events of the previous episode. Mm-hmm. You know, the Kingpin's accountant. Uh, in a parking garage. He played Alan Shepard, by the way. In the oh, thank stuff. you. You're yeah, that, very good. Go ahead. That was the uh, first American in orbit, if I recall correctly. Yes? No? Hold on. Maybe so. I'm looking. Second person. Um, Where's that John And Glenn? the first American to travel into space. Okay, first American in space. And then John Glenn must have been the first one in orbit. Yes. Okay, got it. Okay, I always get those two confused. All right. The fifth um, and oldest person to walk on the moon. That's awesome. Everybody that walks on the moon gets gets props from me. Mm-hmm. He has many years like me, though. Oh, had. does he? Mm-hmm. Mm. That's right. That's a shame. That's all right. It's an inner ear issue. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm, I know about it because I get vertigo and stuff. So, mm. um, Matt's distracted by the by sticks cane tapping in the parking garage. So, uh, Leland takes advantage of it and kind of like thump Matt right in the uh, equipment. Yeah. Ouchie. And then, and then he's like, feet don't fail me now. Gets in, hops into his car and drives off. Yeah. And Matt's going, Oh, yeah. Oh, oh my twig and berries. <laughs> <laughs> and stick, stick walks up going, are you just going to lie there on the floor? <laughs> You're right. <laughs> just giving him crap already. Yeah. Hasn't seen him in 20 years. Right. Well, he he feels like he taught him better than that. Yeah. So. He's like, really? You let an old man, like, kick you in the in the nuts and then drive off? Right. That's, a, that's right. pretty bad. I was expecting that car to explode. I was, too. Okay. But it didn't. Okay. So it wasn't just me, then? No, no, okay, no. Okay, no. good. So we get some uh, flashbacks uh, to when Stick meets Matt as a kid for the first time in the church ward where Matt, young Matt, is having all kinds of problems with sound and, and smells and all this stuff bombarding him. 
overloading his senses. And Stick gets that his senses are becoming sharper and he can't handle it. Right. And he teaches him how to tone them down and tune them. Yeah. So that he can separate them from each other. Right. That's his we, thing, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, we did get a hint because the nun that's speaking with Stick in this episode uh, vaguely hints about Matt's mom mm-hmm. um, as, she, quote, an entirely different story. Mm-hmm. Which, which she it, again, is. if you've read the comics, see, this is why comics are, are good, people, because you know all this stuff. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, we, we've, we're going to... They, they, we find out, I mean, we're probably going to find out that about Matt's mom being a nun and, you know, so that that whole Sister Maggie storyline down the road. Right. Um, yeah, so Stick teaches him about how to hone his senses, trains him to fight, like you said. Um, but uh, he ultimately leaves when Matt kind of sees him as a surrogate father, sort of. And uh, gives him, offers him a friendship bracelet made off of a uh, ice cream cone wrapper, and sticks like no room for sentimentality. Crush, right? Crushes and, it right in his hand, right in front of him. It's like, uh, you have failed me, and walks, you know. Yeah, even though they have set up a time yeah. to train yeah. again, yeah, he decides no, can't work nope. with you anymore. Nope, that's it. You, you showed me weakness. I'm out. You of have here. failed the sensei. <laughs> Nice. Thank you. Very nice. Nice playing words. Um, uh, you know what? I just came what? up with that. And that's pretty know, good for someone was, on oxycodone, right? That was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, surprise. Karen's on pain meds again. <laughs> oh, yeah. I wasn't supposed to say anything, was I? <laughs> yep. I think they could probably tell. Probably. I know I know that uh, uh, Peterson could. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Okay. I'm sure because he's looking for it. He's ex- he's happy about it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, meanwhile, in the present day, Stick gives Matt all kinds of crap about his silk sheets and his German beer. Mm-hmm. Just, just totally. You know, he wants him to um, cut his relationships, and Matt just flat out tells him, "You know, you're a dick, dude." He is. He's a huge dick. And Stick's like, "Yeah, yeah, I kind of am." Yeah, I am. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, he but, owns it. But, yeah, but he's like, I have my reasons, okay? Right. Yeah, he totally makes fun of him. Mm-hmm. Um, calls him out on everything. Was there a girl here? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, she's not coming back. Good. <laughs> he just wants him to totally like get rid of everything that's a distraction and focus on this upcoming war that's going to be. Still, what a dick. I yeah. mean. Well, then that's why he said that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, turns out Stick wants Matt's help to destroy this supernatural weapon called Black Sky. Right. Um, doesn't mm. it really explain what it is, but he just says, oh, it could wreak havoc upon the city, so we better go do something about that. Mm-hmm. So they go off to the, the nearby pier at night. Matt's all dressed up in his like, little black ninja costume, and Stick's there being Stick. Why is every city in a comic book... Why do they all have a docks? Well, with New York, it's right there. Yeah, New York, I get it. But yeah, that makes sense. But, but every because, city in the comic books has because it, like a because warehouse. Because it's a great place for criminals to hang out and okay. do stuff. That's all it is. It's so nothing set. is in the middle of the country. <laughs> yeah, okay. that's why. Exactly why. Okay. I mean, Metropolis has a harbor. Gotham City has a harbor. Star City has a harbor. Star City is because it's on the Saturday, Central you know, City. Yeah. Central know. City, sort of, for, on the TV show, all of a sudden has like water. Right. So I'm trying to figure out like it's well, like a beach. Is it a really big lake? Mm-hmm. I don't. I'm trying to figure out why are where all this water. It's in Central beachy City. too. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, it's in the Midwest. It should not. But again, it's it's pretty close, at least in the TV universe, to, to Star, Star City, um, Starling City. Yeah. Well, it's Star City. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um. Well, so is, it's, it more like, it's, so is Central City more like California? It's far enough away to, um, it takes everyone but Flash like a couple right. hours right. to get back and forth. Mm-hmm. But Barry, it only takes like, you know. Or um, 
Malcolm Merlin, who apparently can travel anywhere really quickly, because he can go from Starling City to Nanda Parbat like that. Yeah. I know. And back again. Mm-hmm. Somehow. Hey, Thea. Yeah, exactly. Oh, and Jeff Peterson. Jeff I'm Pe- Thea. I'm rich. <laughs> I hate everything. <laughs> okay. There you go, Jeff. That's always great. Yeah. Um, the uh, So, Black Sky turns out to be a small boy locked in a shipping crate. Mm-hmm. He's chained up, like heavily chained up. Yeah. And it's just this little tiny young boy. And, you know, Matt's like, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, 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 this is a kid. Right. And Stick's like, no, 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 no. He's more than he appears. Trust me. Mm-hmm. Hinting Bring that he's me the night. Hinting, hinting that he's some kind of like supernatural demon in disguise or something. Yeah, reminded me of the Golden Child big time. Yeah, he right. looked just like that. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so um, he's in this crate that was locked up by Nobu, who is most likely the representative of this ninja clan called the Hand. Mm-hmm. That will probably be a big part of either Daredevil season two. Or whenever they finally join, Daredevil finally joins forces with Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, and Iron Fist in the Defenders. Right. So I'm not sure when that's going to pay off, but it will pay off. So do Hopefully. you think the scene at the beginning, and I'm not joking about this, by the way. Right, right. Where Stick uh, cuts Chops the dude. hand, yeah. That was foreshadowing, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. I think that's all, I think this whole Black Sky thing, I think that's all setting up the, the, um, Defenders. Okay. I think that I think that's what brings there you know, like Daredevil meaning Iron Fist because Iron Fist is from the supernatural kind of kung fu realm. Right. Um Kun Lun. Right. So um I think that's gonna factor in with the hand and because the hand is part of from Daredevil lore, but I think it's I think it's all gonna blur together with the hand and Kun Lun and it's gonna be like a big like uh showdown okay. eventually. Cool. That's my theory. An all-encompassing thing. Yeah. All I right. think that's what they're building up to. Excellent. Um, so uh, Stick tries to kill Black Sky with an arrow. Yep. So he thinks he's on arrow, I guess. Uh, <laughs> well, hey. But but Daredevil like reaches up, grabs it, mm-hmm. deflects it. Um, well, it's a kid. Yeah, I know. So... Um, they, the Nobu and his guys like shuffle Black Sky out of the way, uh, while, you know, I guess Matt and Stick are like, you know, go back and leave or argue and they go back to Matt's place. But, um, Stick tells Matt later, oh, by the way, guess what? I killed Black Sky. Yep. Off screen. Right. (laughs) And you didn't see it coming. And Matt's not happy. Matt is not happy. They, these two throw down. That's right. Big time, uh, big fight, trashes the whole apartment, um, and but this time, of course, Matt now that he's in his prime, defeats Stick. That's right. And he's telling him, "Get up, right? Get up, right?" So throwing, yeah. throwing his words back at him. Get up, so I can knock you down yeah. again. <laughs> right, pretty much. Yeah. It's like it's like if you were um, you had an abusive father and you finally kicked his ass. Right. Yeah. That's pretty. I, much I would it. say that's exactly it. Yep, you were you finally grew up and you got big and you knocked your abusive dad on his ass. Right. That's that kind of feeling. And, All right, and like the classic abusive father, mm-hmm. he breaks the cycle, but he also uses the skills of fighting in order to help people. I mean, right. that's that's one of those tropes as well. I totally agree. The um, meanwhile, we've been wondering. Well, actually, I take this back. Before we do that. While cleaning up after the fight, Matt finds that friendship bracelet, Mm -hmm. meaning, of course, that Stick kept it all these years. And he's like, you really liked me (laughs) after all, even though you treated me like crap and you called my, you insulted my beer and my silk sheets. Yeah. He crumpled it up, but apparently. He unfolded it. (laughs) Yeah. And he put it to rights and kept yep. it. He pressed yep. it in a little scrapbook and drew yep. hearts around it. And... <laughs> that um, and stick. That's right. T L A. 
<laughs> nice. Thank you. I like that. Uh, um, so there's a, there's that. Uh, and an arrow you, through it, of course. You know. Right, exactly. Exactly. That was meant for Black Sky, but sadly yeah, didn't. Yeah, no. Um, so we don't know what's going on with Black Sky. Yeah. But I'm sure we'll find out in The Defenders or Daredevil Season 2. Right. We'll find out. Uh, if Karen, meanwhile, who's kind of a forgotten plot point in this whole thing, um, she ends up getting attacked by Fisk's men mm-hmm. um, walking around and at night, which is never good. Brilliant. Because she knows that someone's after her. Right. I mean, she's So like, why not well, go out I've by yourself I've got mates with me. I guess I'll be okay. Yeah. But she's not. Dummy. But lucky for her, uh, Foggy Nelson was stalking her. <laughs> and he whacks one of the guys upside the head with a baseball bat, an aluminum baseball bat. Ping! Yeah. See, I, I prefer, love that noise, actually. See I, see, I prefer wood. I prefer crack. Do you? I prefer cracked ping any day. Mm. I used an aluminum bat when I played. Ping just sounds like little little league, you know. Ping. Yeah, I guess. I want crack. I want that good hard. You like that wood sound? Yeah, huh? I love that wood sound. Yeah. A lot of guys like wood. Hey now. <laughs> Sorry. That that hey now was for Phil Parrish, which we'll talk about later. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I still he, have my. It's a. He, li- he likes my hey nows. It's a cobalt blue aluminum uh, bat, and it, it was a really expensive aluminum bat at the time. I still right. own it, just so you know. See, I'm a, I'm a Louisville slugger all the way. Mm. But I was ahead of my time. Yes, you were, okay. as always. <laughs> Not uh, anymore, unfortunately. But Okay, go so for it. Ki- so, so, uh, so Karen brings Foggy to meet Ben Urich. I like how Karen, she's saved by him. Mm-hmm. But she also is like, were you stalking me? <laughs> yeah. Well, then she turns. Then duh. she turns around and maces the guy. Right. Front, which I think was hilarious. Yeah. It's like, yeah, uh, you knew you were gonna get that mace. Right. But yeah. So yeah. And yeah, Foggy's like, oh no, I wasn't stalking you at all, even though I was stalking you. No, right. no. But yeah. So, so yeah, she. Karen it was a weird scene. It was. Karen introduces Foggy to uh, Ben Urich. Right. So it's like, hey, we need a lawyer. Right. And Ben. On this. Ben's nonplussed. Yeah. He's by like, this. Okay. Well, that's, okay that's... Why are you letting someone else in on this? Right. Because he could help us. Right. Yeah. Do but... we need his help? Not really. No, not really. Not really. Plus, he's on the other side of the fence on the mask thing. Right. Mm-hmm. So, and of course, you've watched ahead of me. Yes. So I'm going to sound dumb if this is wrong. No, you but... never sound dumb. Okay. So um, he's friends with Matt, obviously. Yeah. And if he right. finds out that yeah. Matt is the mask, then there's yeah. going to be issues with the story. Mm-hmm. Right? Episode 10. Okay. That's all I'm saying. Okay. It's coming. Okay. We'll, so... be, talking... we'll be talking about it. All right. Trust me. Because it's a great episode. Okay. One of my favorites of the season. Okay, so lastly, we have Stick going off to a little secret meeting, mm-hmm. and we're introduced to another player from the Frank Miller Daredevil era, Stone, uh-huh. who is this big dude um, that is, in the comics, he's Stick's partner mm-hmm. in this group called The Chaste, and their whole purpose is fighting the hand, right? this you know, ninja clan. And uh, that, uh, so obviously we're going to see the hand at some point. So this right. is just more setting that up. So maybe in, like again, in Daredevil season two, or so I'm hoping maybe in Daredevil season two, we get Electra. I hope so. Hopefully. Maybe appearance by Wolverine. I don't know about Wolverine, but I know that Electra was all over Frank Miller Daredevil. Right. So if um we get that i'm presuming we're gonna get bullseye and i'm gonna presuming we're gonna get electra and hopefully she will be greek this time as opposed to jennifer garner yeah hopefully and you know they break bones sticks and stone yes they do (laughs) those pain meds are just rocking you right now that's good (laughs) that was a great non sequitur sorry I just, no, I like that they're that, that partners was, and that was their adorable. Are... Yeah. Sticks and stick and stone. Stick, yeah. Stone. Yeah. Yep. So what did you give this episode? 
I gave it uh, seven and a half foggy fisticuffs. And that is not a bad rating. No, it's not a bad rating at all. Perfectly acceptable. Yeah. I like this episode a little bit more. Because of Stick. Because uh, of Stick. I love Stick. I love Scott Glenn. I thought it was just perfect. I thought their relationship, the way Scott Glenn and Charlie Cox are bantering back and forth, that whole dynamic was perfect. I love the fact that Stone turns up the end. I was all geeking about that. So I gave this one 9 out of 10 ice cream wrapper friendship bracelets. Oh, aren't you cute? Yeah. Just a little heartwarming. They need to make daisy chain bracelets. <laughs> Sit in the grass, put them in their hair. Matt, Matt hands stick like a little note. It's like, you know, are you my friend? Yes. Check yes no. or check no. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. 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 Okay. There's so uh, so that about does it for this week. We only have three this week. So we actually have shows. some time. Yeah, shows. We've uh, we got a little feedback, though. We do quite a bit. So why don't you give us a rundown on the feedback? Sure. I'll read Jeff Peterson's feedback first because okay. he wrote us some stuff on Facebook. Uh, quite a rant. You yeah. might want to sum that one up. <laughs> it's a bit of a, a bit of a I rant. can read it. Okay. All right, so he ahead. wrote a first post mm -hmm. and he said, I just finished listening to episode nine and I'd like to add one comment. The only thing worse than crying Felicity is edge of tears Felicity. <laughs> now, this I is a reference to the Arrow season finale. Correct. To remind everybody, yeah. If I never hear her trembling voiced half sobs again, it will be too soon. And while I'm on the topic, I seem to remember Ray Palmer practically crash landing every time he flew in that suit. But Felicity puts it on once and flawlessly executes a daring rescue. I know, I know, it's a comic book show, but my suspension of disbelief only goes so far. That scene was just unnecessary. Okay, I'm done complaining, carry on. And then I wrote something to the effect of, you know what? It's nice to know that someone agrees with us, so rant all you like. And he said, okay. <laughs> all righty then. You opened the floodgates, didn't you? Let me continue. And I was glad because, you know, we like having feedback. Yep. And he said, it seems nitpicky because truly we are living in a glorious golden age, which I do agree with. Did you ever, in your wildest dreams, imagine that you'd have so many comic-based TV shows to choose from? I'd like to have access to some of those 70s-era made-for-TV Spider-Man and Captain America movies, just to remind me not to whine, because those were brutal. <laughs> yes, I agree, yeah. Jeff. I like the Spider-Man show. As a Spider kid. Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Yeah, not, not the electric company Spider-Man. I, I no, that no. was cool, too. That was cool, too. The comic book. I mean, the... the with the... Dun, 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 all the 70s little... <laughs> Me, too. Yeah. But that. there is no excuse for poor writing, Arrow writers. You have failed the show. <laughs> not that it's been all bad. I loved f seeing Tatsu in her katana get up. Me, too. That was good. Tats they needed more Katana. Uh, yeah, episode. a whole episode of Katana would have yep. been good. I want a whole series of Katana. Me too. I want a, spin I want a Katana spinoff series. I agree. That was seriously badass, and I think she would be a perfect partner for Green Arrow. But that won't happen because Laurel took four or five boxing lessons, <laughs> which makes her capable of taking out a dozen ninjas without breaking a sweat. So now Tatsu is going back to a life of solitude. Thanks. Well, was, well, to be fair, though, she was getting, tra uh, Laura was getting trained by uh, Nissa Al Ghul. Sure. So it was more than the Wildcat. Yeah, boxes. but. Yeah, yeah, I know what you, I know what Jeff's saying, yeah. but she did get a little more training. Yeah. And please help me out with why the snipers would not stand down, even when ordered to you by the chief of effing police. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just hoping that once Iron Adam and company move on to their new show, Arrow can get back to basics, which is what made the show so much fun in the first place. Okay. And that's Jeff Peter Peterson's feedback on Facebook. And I want to say a hearty thank you because it's nice to feel like we're not the only ones that hated that episode. Too <laughs> <laughs> a little validation. That's right. A little personal validation, not just right. this nebulous... It's it's not just us. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. So what else do we have? Uh, Philip Perich. Perich. Yeah. Okay. On Phil Facebook Perich. again. Philip Perich. Yeah. He goes by Philip, but I, I think his dad's name's Philip. So, or 
dad, his dad's name's Phil, and he's named Phil, so he's probably like Phil Jr., I'm guessing. Okay. So I, so I think he goes by Phil, too. Okay. Even though on his Facebook it says Philip. Okay. So hi, Phil. Yeah, hi, Phil. Um, he says he loves when you do your Thea impression, and he means me, because right. I, I asked, I clarified. And I said, you mean, wah, I'm rich, poor me, I hate everything, pout. Yeah. <laughs> and he said, yes, I already told Charles you have to do this every episode when you two talk Arrow. <laughs> and my reply was done and done. <laughs> and then you said that you have your I am yeah, from him. Yeah, he because he I am to me about this. See, now uh, that's on Facebook. That's cool. Which, which is cool. So, yeah, um, you know, if you guys want to do that, you can also I am us on the Phantom Zone podcast. Feel free because uh, but um yeah, he, he he's you know he friended me on Facebook because you know he also does podcasts for the Southgate Media Group. He does the Flash Arrow Power Hour. He does Before the Bat and Super Connectivity, um, so which are very cool. So check those out. A little shout out to uh, Phil there. Um, but he I am to me about it, and he said, "I love the Fandom Zone!" Double exclamation marks. Nice. Yeah. Tell Karen she has to do her Thea impression anytime you two talk Arrow. <laughs> so I guess you have to wait yeah, for a while. To... I'm rich, poor me. I hate yeah. everything. Yeah. <laughs> she, he likes I that. don't know which one it is. Yeah. Is no, it's just like, well, I'm so rich. And, 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 yeah. I just, I just, I think it's more like, I just want to be the, me, 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 the I've me, had me. everything handed to me. Yeah, that, oh my God. I hate my life. It's the worst. Yeah. Right. And now I'm a superhero with my ex-boyfriend's costume. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. That. Um, and he also likes our sexy time porn music. <laughs> oh yeah. There we go. Oh yeah. <laughs> It's going out to Phil. And Phil, there's this one for you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's hilarious. You have to work that into every episode. <laughs> well, there you go. It's so done and done yet again. There you go. So that's that's out for you, Phil. So thanks for listening. Um, everybody check out his podcast. They're pretty cool. So uh, give him some support because he's, a, he's supporting us, so we support him right back. Excellent. And then we had two iTunes reviews, mm -hmm. um, one from Anna Mockery, who gives us five stars and says, keep it coming, love the coverage on multiple shows. And Nerds Domain gives us also five stars and says, a great pop culture show. Excellent. So thanks, everyone. That's amazing. Love all the feedback. We could always use more. Sure. Uh, so feel free to drop us lines on Facebook or where else can they find us? Well, us in general, we are at Fandom Zone Cast on Twitter. Mm -hmm. On Facebook, we are Fandom Zone Podcast. And that would be facebook.com forward slash Fandom Zone Podcast. Mm -hmm. And our email is Fandom Zone Cast at gmail.com. Right. Then you can find me at yes. Alaveria on Twitter. Mm -hmm. And in my bio, I have an About Me link where you can find all my other links. And I have just updated it. So All right. I am up to date. You have new linkage. Well, updated linkage. Update updated linkage. Yeah. Okay. And a nice new background picture. Yes, I saw that background picture. I thought it was yes. quite excellent. I just put new shows in, I, I in like, the little boxes. Yeah, we're gonna need to update our uh, fandom zone banner. Yeah, I, for that's the, in the for works. the fall. Yeah. Okay, cool. Because because now we have we're gonna have Supergirl, we're gonna have Lucifer, and yep. Constantine's gone sadly. I so. Know. You know, yeah, we're gonna we need a little tweaking yep. on that. As soon as we get more logos yep. for the fall shows, I'll be updating that. So. Yep. Yep. The um. And you. Uh, me. Um. I am on the Twitter machine at Charles Skaggs. Yep. I'm on the Instagram, where you can see cool pictures of my new Funko flashes. Nice. So I put those up. Um. And I'm on the Facebook which I already talked about. And uh, I'm on the Google Plus for all you crazy, crazy kids, kids on, on the Google, Google Plus. Plus. I love that. And uh, so, uh, and my blog of geeky things, damn good coffee and hot. Yes. Where very good. there was a lot of TV stuff that was out recently. So mm -hmm. there's lots of TV news there to check that out. 
Um, and there will probably be more to come because we're just as we wrap up all these shows, you know, they're going to be casting here probably in the next couple months. Yep. So for the season, the next upcoming season. So, yep, there'll be more. To That's talk about. right. And I've put some stuff on our Facebook page mm -hmm. um, as usual. But what Charles does is he finds that news and he does a little editorial on it as well. Yep. Yep. So, I, post that, I post that on our Fandom Zone podcast page on Facebook as well. Right. So that you can you can check that out if you want. So it's not a double. It's, you know, he actually adds to it. And I, I find his post very, very entertaining and and uh, insightful well, awesome. as well. Well, thank you. So you're welcome. Ch checks in the mail. Yeah. <laughs> Yay, I can buy ramen. All right. <laughs> Woohoo! My $5 check. Yep. I think it's up to six now. Ooh. Is it really? Awesome. I don't know. We got, you know, inflation. But the... Uh, now, we only have 39 likes on our Facebook page. I know. We need more, you guys. Come on. Although come we've on, had guys. a lot lately. It's pretty We good. have a lot. We, we, we've had about four recently. But we're steadily growing. We're still, we're, not under, we're still under 50. Yep. I'll at least get 50. Come on. I agree. Come That's on, That's only guys. 11, 11 more. 11 more out of you out there that all you have to do is just like us on Facebook. Tell your friends. Tell your friends. Tell your enemies. Tell your arch enemies. Tell your uh, robot sidekicks. Whoever. That's right. Robot sidekicks. Yeah. Yeah. We need more robots liking our page. Tell your time travel past selves or future selves. Hell yes. I agree with that big time. Preferably the past selves because then they they would like us and then you'd already be liked. So see how easy that would be. You could right? like us twice. Boom. Mind blown. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So help us out. All right. So as we struggle to finish this episode <laughs> so that we're actually less time than last week. Barely. Barely. But, yes. but it's sort of progress. Yeah. But at least we got feedback in this time. So that was a that was needed. Yes. It's very so cool. we can actually talk about feedback again. Right. Yay. And maybe we'll get some news in next week because now we'll be only down to two shows. That's right. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> What, it seems like we always find something else to talk about. You know, we're worried about what we're going to do over the summer, but yeah, we, we always, always find something. something. Yeah. Always something. So you guys, don't worry if about it. If it's not one thing, it's another. Yeah. 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 We see, I, I don't want to toot my own horn, but every time we get some sort of feedback, it's always like, hey, you guys are funny. We really like it. And I'm always really flattered. And I'm like, yeah, you know, it feels good when we're talking. So I'm glad that translates. And, uh, you know, we had a conversation on Twitter, you and I, about how our banter seems very moonlighting-ish. <laughs> yes. And we've yeah, actually I, had a couple yeah, of people. I made, I, made that, I made that observation. You seem to like it. I did very much. And a couple of people we're, kind of agreed with us. We're kind of Dave and Maddie. We are oh, very much so. Dave and Maddie of the comic books on TV set. <laughs> That's right. My husband agreed, actually. Yeah. Do bears bear? Do bees bee? <laughs> Do flashes flash? Now, who's Dave and who's Maddie, though? That's a good question. I think we flip-flop. Yeah, we kind of channel both at different times. Yeah. So let us know. Who do you think we are? Do you think we're Dave and Maddie? Do you think we're Sam and Diane? Do you think we're, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. who? Yeah. Kirk and Spock. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, Damn I it, guess Jim. that's it oh, for buddy. this week, yeah? Yeah. Are we going to say goodbye now? Bye now. We'll Bye see you next week. Now. Bye. Bye.